The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, toll the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. The Ogden's Playhouse returns to the air with another Weird Circle presentation. To be heard this evening is a remarkable story with a distinct flavor of mysticism. Falkland by E. Bulwer-Lytton. There's a flavor, too, in Ogden's fine-cut tobacco. Its distinctive character keeps smokers asking for Ogden's to roll their own cigarettes. No wonder, then, that Ogden's is famous for making and keeping friends among smokers who roll their own cigarettes. Make the acquaintance of Ogden's. you like its friendly character. Ogden's is easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now the Ogden's Playhouse presents Falkland by E. Bulwer-Lytton. Out of the past, phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, Falkland. Seek the wisdom of the universe beyond the time of man. Look to the lightning and the thunder. What are the words of fire you seek tonight? Voice of the tempest. I look for the secrets of wisdom no man knows. What is this wisdom you would know? The darkest and ultimate triumph of life itself. The secret of death. Such wisdom requires a price. I will pay the price gladly, whatever it may be. The price is the greatest a mortal man can pay. Being so wise, whomever you love within the narrow confines of this earth will die. I love no one. The price is cheap. Then beware of the time when you do love. The bargain's made. Tell me the secret. Death is a lovely wound healed by infinity into an eternal circle of light. Far off, far beyond your thought, beyond the eclipse of time. Beyond this universe of stars and dust. Robert? It's already seven o'clock. All right, Julia, I'm ready. The carriage is waiting. Everything packed? Everything I need. After all, I'll only be in London a few days. Hasn't Emily come back? Oh, she's probably enchanted with the gardens, and I'm afraid time never means very much to Emily. <laughs> My Robert, how solemn you are, and just a week before your marriage, too. Oh, you're not the least bit excited. Oh, yes, I am. What would my romantic sister have me do, uh, jump up and down with joy? Of course. (laughs) But then I forget you're an austere member of Parliament, and excitement isn't in character. Mm. Ah, well, I suppose when I get you happily married and settled here at Mandeville, I'll have to advertise for a husband for myself, or else I'll be a dour old maid. Nonsense, you. I can't believe it. (laughs) Hello. Hello, Robert. Hello, Emily. I'm sorry to be late, Julia. Emily, where have you been? Way down past the orchard over that hill. Oh, I'm out of breath. The country is really so beautiful. Then you like it here at Mandeville, do you, Emily? Oh, yes. The house is almost as big as a castle. But, Robert, there's a dreadful storm coming up. The sky's almost black as pitch. Must you go tonight? If I don't, I may be late for my own wedding, and you'd hate me for that. And so would I. (laughs) Anyway, business comes before the pleasure of being married. Goodbye, you two. Take good care of Emily for me, Julia. I will. Hurry back to Mandeville, Robert. Oh, it's not Mandeville I'll hurry back to, but to you, my beautiful bride, 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Robert. Oh, what a shame he has to go. And on such an awful night. Yes. Why, the sky's simply full of lightning. Oh, now, don't tell me you're afraid of storms. Well, I am a wee bit. Oh, I saw the rose gardens, Julia. Why didn't you tell me the arbors were so beautiful? Oh, because I had a reason. What? I bet I know. That's where the wedding's going to be. Under oh, the arbor. Oh, Robert told you. No, I guessed it's such a perfect place. And there are millions of buds, Emily, just ready to bloom. Why, Emily, you're not listening to a word I say. Why do you keep staring out of the window like that? Julia, I saw the strangest thing a little while ago. When I came to the edge of the wood, beyond the orchard there, a man was standing high on the hill, looking up as if... as if he were talking to the thunderclouds. He looked wild and strange. Who do you suppose he was? Oh, I don't know, but it certainly sounds like our Mr. Falkland. Why, who's he? One of our neighbors, though you wouldn't think so, the way he stays cooped up in that old house of his. Where is it? A mile or so beyond the wood. It's called Glenmare. But it's more of a ruin than anything else. The village folk are frightened to death of him. They say flowers wither and die when he tends them. And if he works in his garden, the earth turns dry and nothing will grow. Oh, what a silly legend. Is he an old man? No, he went to Oxford when Robert was there. Well, then you must know him. Not very well. But my, isn't it strange that you should see Mr. Falkland on your first day at Mandeville? Very few people ever meet him at all. He saw me, too. He looked down, and for a moment I thought he'd speak. Julia... Wouldn't it be fun if he came here to see us? Why don't you invite him to dinner? Tomorrow night. Oh, he'd never accept, Emily. He never goes anywhere. Well, ask him just the same. What harm can it do? Hmm. It would be a feather in our caps if he came to Mandeville. Oh, yes. And wouldn't Robert be surprised? All right, I'm game. We'll send him a note in the morning. Auckland, you must admit that living the life of a recluse, so to speak, would arouse the curiosity of the villagers. Well, you're right, Miss Mandeville, though it hadn't occurred to me. Is that what you do then, Mr. Falkland? Spend your time at study? Well, I suppose you'd call it that, Miss Linvale. You see, when I was in school, I, I centered my happiness and wisdom. It was an undying thirst somewhere inside of me, and quenching it has kept me mostly to myself. But that makes me no less a mortal man. Of course. Because here we are at Mandeville, and you have forgotten your studies. At least for a little while. And I'm indebted to both of you for the dinner as well as the diversion. Now I shall go. I mustn't outstay my welcome. Oh, but you're always welcome at Mandeville. Mr. Falkland, sometimes my feminine curiosity gets the better of my good manners. And I'd like to ask you a question. I was wondering why you happened to come tonight when you've so often declined before. Would you like a frank answer? Robert says a frank answer is always better than a subtle one. Well, then, I'll not be subtle. Yesterday, when I was walking on the hill, I saw a beautiful young lady on the path below, just at the edge of the wood. It occurred to me that she might be a guest here at Mandeville, and so I came to meet her. You see, my, my motive was entirely selfish. Now, good night. I'll go by way of your terrace and garden, if I may. Goodbye, Miss Lindale. Good night, Mr. Falkland. Well, no wonder people say he's strange. He is. Imagine, he came to Mandeville just to meet you and freely admitted it. I'm glad he's gone, Emily. Emily, look at me. Why, you're very pale. Hmm? Am I, Julia? I guess it's that disturbing Mr. Falkland. He does have a curious effect on one, doesn't he? Julia... The yeah, air's so close, I think I'll go for a walk in the rose garden. All right, but don't be long. But let us love while yet we may. Our summer is decaying. And woe to hearts that in their grey December go amain. <gasps> Who's there? Oh, Mr. Falkland, it's you. I thought the rose arbor would hide me, Miss Linvale. Sorry to frighten you. Well, it was quite a shock for a moment. I've been enjoying the midnight beauty of the garden. Such roses and moonlight don't grow at Glenmare. But now I'll be on my way. Oh, no, don't go on my account. I was only just walking around for a bit. I wasn't a bit sleepy, and the night air is very tempting. Miss Linvale, I mustn't talk with you. Make me go. I, I don't have the will to do it myself. But why should you go, Mr. Falkland? You are a strange man. You know, I didn't say it tonight, 
But I felt very keenly that I've known you before, and I can't remember where. It was a meeting you dreamed. I've dreamed it, too. Oh, it seems more than the fancy of a dream. But it was the only way I could reach you. Dreams are safe. And there's no safety in tonight. Aren't you afraid? Of what? Of the moonlight? No, no, no. Of me. Look in my eyes. And tell me what you see. A picture of a girl in an arbor of roses. Is the girl alive? Oh, quite alive. And laughing. Well, then you know now why I can't meet you again. Ever again. But I was only going to ask you if you'd go with Julia and me to the beach on Friday. And now you've refused before I could invite you. What do you mean? Why can't you come back to Mandeville? Because I'd fall in love with the roses and the roses would die. Oh, Julia told me that silly legend. I don't say you believe it yourself. I only want to believe that I saw you here caught in a, in a compliment of moonlight, not in a dream. Emily, that... That verse you were saying, speak it again. Oh, no. Well, close your eyes, please, and speak it again. So I'll remember you. All right. I'll close my eyes if you wish. But let us love while yet we may. Our summer is decaying. And woe to hearts that in their gray December go a May. Mr. Falkland? Mr. Falkland? Why, oh, he's gone away. <laughs> Not in a shell I found buried in the sand. Why, Emily, what is the matter? Emily, ever since Julia, Julia, look who's that coming over the dunes. Why, it's Mr. Falkland. Whatever is he doing here at the beach? Hello there. Hello, Mr. Falkland. Emily, I really don't think we should encourage him. Have you come to help us find the loveliest shells from the sea, Mr. Falkland? I have, Miss Lindale, if you'll forgive me for intruding like this. Oh, the beach needs company, too. Did you ever see such a lonesome place? We've been waiting for a guide and boatman from the village, but he seems to have lost his way instead. Well, now what difference does it make? Now we can visit the cave, Julia. Mr. Falkland will take her. She's had her heart set on seeing the pirate's den. Oh, but, Emily, I'm too tired. I'm too exhausted to move an inch. Well, then you, you can wait here while Mr. Falkland and I go. We won't be long. Oh, do you mind, Julia? And how will we know the cave? Well, you see, even the prospect of an adventure makes her happy, Mr. Falkland. Well, if I remember rightly, the entrance to the den is small at the foot of the cliff, and you stoop to walk in, and then the floor suddenly slopes upward, and you go up a little way and inside the cliff itself. Now run along and hurry back. I'll wait for you here. Mr. Falkland, do you suppose she'll ever grow up one of these days? How oh, funny. The daylight from the mouth of the cave lights the walls. Oh, uh, let's go back. It, it's so dark and it's too much like a tomb. Miss Linvale. Emily, wait a moment. I knew you'd come today, Mr. Falkland. I tried to stay away. But I was as lonesome as the sea. Well, then you hoped I'd come. My heart was very tight with wishing. You're the wisest man in the world. Tell me, is it wrong? I love you more than you know. But it cannot be. We mustn't see each other ever again. Then this is love, I feel. And I'm not ashamed. I'm glad to know I never loved Robert at all. Oh, my Emily, if I thought I could cheat death and take you from him. Don't you see, my darling? There, 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 there's, a, there's a contagion in every breath I breathe. Death grows inside of me. And I'm afraid to touch you. Afraid I'll, I'll murder what I love. Then touch me now. Take my hand. There, you see, it's a foolish fear. Emily, wait. It's grown so dark in here. Falkland, the tide. It's filling the den. Oh, hurry, Mook. We must get out quickly. We'll have to swim underwater out of the mouth of the cave now before it's too late. Are you afraid? No, not with you. Then promise, if we live, you'll be my bride. We'll, we'll go away, far away together. I promise. I promise. But if we die... Shh. You mustn't speak of dying. Being so wise, Falkland, whomever you love within the narrow confines of this earth will die. The 
The mystery of life and death has always been a challenge to mankind. Many have attempted to probe this deep secret. Falkland, for instance, believed he achieved a measure of success, as we will learn in the second half of tonight's Weird Circle story. To the smoker who rolls his own cigarettes, the popularity of Ogden's fine-cut tobacco holds no secret. When you roll a cigarette with Ogden's, you know at once why Ogden's is the popular choice of roll-your-own cigarette smokers in Canada. Smooth, uniform texture, satisfying taste are at once evident in Ogden's, the cigarette tobacco famous for its unvarying high quality. You know Ogden's is a good tobacco the moment you see it. The moment you taste a cigarette rolled with Ogden's, you know it's the tobacco you've been looking for. The high quality of Ogden's is well known to smokers who roll their own cigarettes. So here's a reminder to try a package. You'll find Ogden's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now back to our story. On a visit to the sea, Falkland and Emily explore the pirate's den, a cave in a seaside cliff. The tide suddenly begins to fill the cave. Falkland, believing the curse of death is coming true, confesses his love. And Emily promises to marry him if they escape. Man, we'll never get there before the tide's full. I'm doing the best I can, Mum. Didn't you know the pirate's den is dangerous? Many is the pair of lovers who drown there. Oh, but they're not in love, and we must save them. The tide comes in swift as an arrow here on the cliffs. Look, look, there's the place just ahead. Veer a little to the right. Oh, how high the water is. Is it too deep for you to dive? I don't know, Mum. I can't promise to get them out. Wait, look, look there. There they are. Oh, there they are, swimming toward us. By gum, they've cheated the tide. They're a lucky pair. Emily, Mr. Falkland, row faster. They must have discovered the tide in time and swum under it, out of the cave. Yes, yes, but they're safe and that's all that matters. Emily, Mr. Falkland. Now, Emily... Keep the covers pulled up and just rest. Here's some broth. Thank you, Julia. I'm all right now. Where's Mr. Falkland? He went home by way of the garden. Will he be back soon? Of course not. Why do you ask that? He saved my life. I haven't thanked him. Oh, nonsense. He didn't do more than any other man would have. Now, you drink this broth. Julia, I must see him. Send a servant. Ask Mr. Falkland to come. Emily. Oh, you're feverish. Your forehead's so warm. But I want to tell him not to be afraid. Emily, what's happened? You frighten me, the way you talk. There's something I want you to tell Robert. Will you, Julia? Tell him. We can't be married now. What? Oh, don't you understand? From the first moment I saw Mr. Falkland that day on the hill, I was hopelessly in love with him. I couldn't help it, Julia. It, it roared inside me like thunder. Emily, I won't listen to this nonsense. Is it nonsense to be in love? Oh, I never knew before what it was like. I, I only thought I was in love with Robert. What has this man Falkland done to you? He's evil. He bends people to his will. Oh, no, no, Julia. Nothing can change the way I feel. Nothing in this world. Now send for him, please. Tell him to come. I'll do nothing of the kind. Oh, try to understand. Do you want me to marry Robert when you know I love someone else? Emily, this is outrageous. I'm going to send the carriage to London. When Robert comes, you'll have to tell him this yourself. Really, Emily, I never thought you capable of such deceit. Oh, you don't understand. You don't know what it is. Now let me get up. He'll come back to the garden and I'll wait for him there. Falkland, here I am, under the arbor. Oh, my Emily, I've been so worried, so afraid you were ill. Julia said I shouldn't have come. But I had to see you, Falkland. Do you remember the promise? I remember little else. Where will you take me then? Far away, somewhere I've never been. Wherever you please, my darling. So long as you're there and I'm with you. <laughs> now you see how silly your fears were. But I was afraid you'd stay away from me because of it. Well, what have you done? Is there some, some magic in your eyes that defies even death itself? Oh, Emily, I'm not afraid anymore. Look at me. The curse is gone. 
And I can touch you and kiss you without fear of some terrible disaster. Emily, I'm happier than I've ever been before. Auckland, look at that star. The first and brightest of the evening. Do you also understand the stars? I only understand that you're safe and alive and that love is the greatest wisdom of all. Oh, even now you look for wisdom. Oh, Auckland, I'm deliriously tired. When will you come for me? When will we go? I'm resigned to say tomorrow. I dare not say tonight. Tomorrow, then. But it's a long time away. There's a minister in the village. I'll not miss the roses. I'll arrange the time and send you a note when to meet me and where, but I'm afraid to let you out of my sight. There's nothing to fear. I'll be at the spot whenever you say. Not even death itself would stop me. Good night, Portland. Good night, Robert, I thought you'd never get here. Well, I came as quickly as I could. Where is Emily? She's been in bed all day. She's ill, I know she is. Oh, Robert, you've got to make her see it's not too late. Have you talked with her today? She's been asleep in the room next door, murmuring Falkland's name and speaking of death and thunder and all manner of evil things. She's pale. She even cries in her sleep. Then she won't see this Falkland again. I'll make sure of that. Oh, but she's so determined, Robert. Last night, in spite of anything I could do, she went out in the garden to meet him. How could you allow such a thing? How could I stop it? She's possessed with evil. And this letter, it's from Falkland? A messenger brought it this morning. I didn't dare give it to Emily before you came. Have you read it? Oh, no, it's addressed to her. Well, we'll certainly see what devilish stuff he's written. Hmm? My darling Emily, I'm distracted with terrible apprehensions. I ask myself, how is Emily today? Does she love me still? And will she love me in spite of the disgrace Robert Mandeville may heap upon her? Hmm. Tell him we love honorably and completely as no two people have before. My darling, the time is midnight tonight. I'll be waiting on the road where it touches the lake. All my love, Falkland. Robert, they're running away tonight. I'm going to talk to Emily. Oh, it's a terrible thing, Robert. She doesn't know what she's doing. Make her see how wrong it is. Wait here. I'll call if I need you. Emily, are you awake? Robert? Oh, Robert, I'm glad you're back. Please come in. Julia sent for me. I left my business at a crucial time. What is all this I've been hearing about you and that devil, Falkland? Oh, Robert, don't be annoyed. Don't raise your voice. I've been waiting to see you, to tell you myself. Well, what is it? And why are you in bed? Are you ill? Well, I do feel a little tired. You know, don't you, that I won't let you do this drastic thing. That man has some power over you. He loves me, Robert, more than ever you could. Oh, please try to understand. If I hurt you, I'm sorry and, and ask to be forgiven. I wouldn't harm you intentionally. I love Falkland in spite of anything you do or say. I can't help it, and nor can he. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, Robert, I do know. You're ill. You're not yourself. This letter from Falkland. Emily, I have never read such a scandalous letter. I'll not allow you to wreck your life like this. Is it for me? Robert, you had no right to read my letter. Give it here. No, you'll never see it. Believe me, Emily, I know what's best. Robert, stop! Don't burn my letter! There. There now. An oil lamp has a second use to destroy an evil thing. How can I ever forgive you for that? Now it's gone. Where did he say to meet him? What was the time? You'll never see Falkland again. You're to be my wife, Emily. And you've got to get this man out of your mind. Robert... You don't know what you're doing. Now I must leave Mandeville. I must go to him. You'll do nothing of the kind. Lie back. You're too weak to walk. But I must. I must. Help me, Robert, please. Oh, <laughs> Emily, what have you done to yourself? You're so pale. You're so ill. Oh, Falkland. Falkland. Emily. Julia, come here. What is it, Robert? Emily's fainted. She's very ill. Oh, poor child. Robert, sent for a doctor quickly before the storm comes. Watch her closely. This is one night Falkland will not have his way. Falkland, where is the place of meeting? What is the time? Where are you waiting, Falkland? Soul, in the thunder of the night, why do you weep? For the loss of my love, which I cannot find. Where is Falkland? What is the time and place? The time is eternal. The place is infinite where sorrow is not known. Go back through the thunder. 
and leave the sorrow of your loss in the flesh of your loved one's heart. Go back through the thunder. Falkland. Oh, I thought I'd never find you. Emily, my darling, come quickly before the storm breaks. Oh, you're more beautiful than ever. I'm happy tonight. But, oh, my darling, don't you see? You must go alone. Alone? Well, what do you mean, alone? Until the time comes when we can meet again. Don't touch me now. Emily, the curse is not dead. You've gone away from me. Only as far as the strength of our love goes through the thunder. Bear the sorrow, Falkland. And sorrow will not allow you to forget. <sighs> Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye. Stop! Stop! Who oh, there? Who? Oh, oh. Who? Are you from Mandeville? Yes, we're doctors from the village. What do you want? We're racing the store. What's happened there? Miss Linvale, is she dangerously ill? She was dangerously ill. They called us too late. Miss Emily died two hours ago. Come back, man. We'll give you a ride to the inn. Why, oh, he's bounding off up the hill. What's the matter with him? Do you know who that is? That's Falkland. I saw him once before. Look, he's climbing to the summit. Here, we'd better go and fetch him and take him home. No, no, it's none of our affair. Look, how he reaches his arms to the sky. Well, man, what of it? We'd better be going. But look at... Good heavens! Did you see that? The lightning struck him dead. Falkland... Have loved beyond the eternal strength of death. Rise from the lightning's arrow of fire. Rise in the thunderous power of your love. Rise and meet her in this infinity of time. Wise man, the wisdom of eternal love is yours. time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, Falkland. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Friends, we hope you enjoyed this presentation at the Ogden's Playhouse. May we suggest that your smoking enjoyment will be enhanced if you'll try Ogden's Fine Cut, the tobacco that rolls easily and smoothly into a satisfying cigarette smoke every time. You'll find Ogden's, a quality cigarette tobacco on every count. Try Ogden's. It's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Next week at this time, another Weird Circle story, The Trial for Murder by Charles Dickens. Join us, won't you? Here's a good tip to pipe smokers. For real pipe smoking satisfaction, try Ogden's Cut Plug. It's a smooth, rich pipe tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> 